hello friends. All of my little symptom flares yesterday were definitely my body screaming at me to slow down. Um, we were supposed, I was supposed to have a shower and be ready to go do some chores by the time the cleaners got here. And the cleaners are here and I'm not ready. I've tried my darndest to get up today and my body is just not allowing it. So Carl and I have rearranged our plans for tomorrow. <sighs> um, luckily or unluckily, <laughs> um, two of our D&D &D friends have been in contact with someone who has COVID and now one of them is not feeling well so tonight's d, &D game has been cancelled slash postponed until they feel better um, so that kind of sucks because I was looking forward to playing D&D &D, but also I'd rather us all be safe my shadows are giving me like demon eyebrows today it's slightly terrifying. Anyway, I just wanted to check in and let you know it's not all roses here. Sometimes I have shitty days where I'm just so exhausted. <laughs> um, but I did manage to have some food with my pills this morning. This morning. it's It was like noon. <laughs> um, but I'm calling that a win. And I have the opportunity to rest. Which I'm also calling a win. See you later. I drive a new path so I won't have to pass the place where you first held my hand. And I'm just trying to get Well, getting less messy as the days go on, <laughs> um, but my messy office, um, which I now share with my editor and also Carl. Carl likes to sit in the shop and work, though. He likes being surrounded by the atmosphere while he's doing paperwork, which I totally get, uh, whereas I prefer to be at a desk. Like, Carl can work lying down in bed. I don't know how he does it. But anyway, that's not what I came on here to tell you about. Um, I just got a message from one of our very lovely customers who um, is just great. And I was going to say, like, comes back often. I think they've been in once, but, you know, they're online all the time. We're always chatting, catching up and stuff. Um, I believe they dye their own yarn as well. Anyway, I just got a message from them saying like hey I was just on your website and I noticed there was a couple of like Harry Potter photos um on like stuff that's like Harry Potter related on one of your like collections and I was like what I missed some <laughs> I went through and I had a massive purge of all of our Harry Potter related stuff um back when JK Rowling um or she who must not be named came out as being um like anti-trans so I did like a huge purge and I decided 
now's the moment to break away from that franchise and all the fan art that I was doing for them. Well, not for them. That sounds like I was employed by fucking Warner Brothers. I wasn't. Um, but I was doing a lot of fan art inspired by the stories. There you go. Um, yeah, so what I figured now was a good time to make the break from it because it's just there are so many things out there hurting trans people right now and I don't want to be contributing even in a such a small minor way um at all to perpetrating the stories um which would you know eventually trickle back and support JK Rowling um and she is using her money uh in a way that I don't agree with so Long story short, um, I've just gone through and like looked at all the collection photos and take off, taken off anything. And there were two, there were two things. I had some embroidery patterns and some pin badges that were um, Potter inspired. And it's kind of getting me excited to make a new collection of those things. Um, yeah, just to like refresh it. Like the shop has been going for seven years now. We're on our eighth year, I think and yeah it's just sometimes it's good to refresh um and i'm really looking forward to being able to use that same style and it's and vigor and like i feel inspired when i think about painting with um brush and ink which was uh, something that i used for those old fan art projects and I, since then i've always felt like oh i can't make something in that same style because it's gonna look like it's part of that collection and like bleh. and like that's stupid like I should just do it um so yeah I'm looking forward to making some of that stuff obviously right now the main thing that we are focusing on is getting our name out there getting more people to the shop because as we're expanding as a business um with uh, new employees and things like that we need to also expand our income <laughs> so we need to expand our customer base and things like that. So if you have friends or family that knit or are interested in crafty things, uh, please shout us out to them. Um, it helps huge, hugely. I've probably said this a million times in these vlogs. I feel like I'm doing that every time I vlog, but, um, yeah. So working with, um, our little editor, um, to get more content out to you guys. Um, obviously I know that Instagram's algorithm is, against most small makers but the more we can put out there the more likely it is that someone will see something so we're working hard on that um we've got a shop update tomorrow which is sunday the 6th of march i believe at one o'clock i know it's tomorrow at 1 p.m anyway right right before knit group i want the shop update to be up by the time the knit group people start arriving um it's kind of exciting because we're all working on like a different part of the shop update, which is something I've never done before. It's usually just me and my computer with my images and my, you know, web shop. And I'm there just like well, for hours away trying to get this shop update up. Whereas like I've got dad processing paperwork. I've got Carl tagging products and uploading photos. And um, he's basically taken the Wool Matters stuff um, I don't have it with me, but all of the Wool Matters yarn he's taken under his own steam because he's got um, descriptions written and everything and he's just like updating photos and putting the products up there, which is phenomenal. And my job is to get these stitch markers up online tonight. We've got them here. You're probably tired of me banging on about these stitch markers, but um, yeah. And then Lily is helping make promotional stuff for Instagram and it's just like boom 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 everything's happening it's great uh so yeah this is a really weird season in business for me specifically because my role is changing from one woman business shop owner to manager and um and that's weird <laughs> it's great I love being a boss. I, I love um, organizing things. Like I love being a project manager um, and stuff like that. So it's great, but it is also really weird because it is also like a very slow season. Like we know that January and February are slow. They're always tight months. They're always when people have spent all their Christmas money already, 
they are tired it's miserable outside like it's gray and cold and sometimes raining and no one wants to come out to the shop um so people are staying home and they're they're not thinking so much about knitting because they've just had a big cozy season around uh, Christmas time and the holidays and December and that kind of stuff so the big wave of wanting to learn new things as well has kind of passed now that we're in the beginning of March um, so yeah so the classes have slowed down a lot and yeah everyone's kind of hoping spring will come soon so they like don't want to get invested in like a big errand jumper or something like that you know uh and let me tell you those big errand jumpers keep the shop running <laughs> yeah. um i love it i love it so much my favorite thing we had someone come in today looking for a baby blanket a pattern and some yarn for a baby blanket and she left with a pattern and some yarn and everything she needs to get going and she was really happy and we found one that she's like excited to start um taught her a few things about finding patterns online and we wound up her yarn for her and i just like yes those are the customers like i miss when we used to have loads of those every day um it's it swings around about so i'm also focusing a lot more time on training people how to do things and spending a lot more time on like the back end of stuff um editing photos and getting stuff like that going and just shopkeepery stuff that isn't directly helping customers so it is it is really a strange season right now for me um but it is one that I'm enjoying. I don't know that I would want it to be like this all the time. It would be very stressful and not very sustainable if it was like this all the time. It's interesting. It's like putting all your money in like a little plant pot and just waiting for it to grow. You know, we haven't seen the leaves pop out yet, but we know that something's happening. Uh, I don't know if that was a really terrible metaphor. But anyway, I am rambling a little bit because I need to go and do a whole bunch, a new batch of stuff and my body is tired <laughs> my body is telling me that it wants to rest and my to-do list is saying that that's not possible <laughs> but luckily carl is probably gonna make us dinner tonight we're gonna have just simple fish cakes and some hasselback potatoes not homemade hasselbacks they're all ready they just need to go in the oven um so that'll be good and then some some dark veggies, some broccoli, um, which I'm looking forward to. Anyway, I should go do some work. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm here on a Sunday night in the office and I can't stop stressing out. I've got all these negative thoughts in my brain about the business and um, I just can't I just, I'm really struggling to think my way out of it. And, uh, it just, recently it seems like no matter how much work I'm doing, um, I'm not seeing any payoff. And I was okay with that for a while, um, because I know these things take time. She's getting to me tonight. I know that this won't last forever, and I'm sure I'll move past it. Um, I just... But I'd be honest with you, sometimes it's stressful running a business and you're not sure if it's gonna, you know, be long, long standing. <laughs> anyway, rambling a little bit, but um, I just wanted to say hi and that um, my Sunday evenings often look like this. I spend a couple of hours after we have dinner. I've already gotten into my pajamas, my comfies, and I usually do some product ordering and just bits and pieces around my desk that um, I didn't get to during the weekend. I was gonna say the work week, but for me, the work week is the weekend. Yeah, we, some positive things. Uh, we managed to get the online shop update live. Uh, we were only, I think it was like 20 minutes later than I said it was gonna be um, to get everything up. Um, because there was just there was just a lot to do and um working 
with multiple people is different than doing everything by yourself. I think I said this before, but <laughs> um, it was exciting to, you know, everyone had their own jobs and we were like, you know, working through it and everything. Um, so that was really positive. We've got the Wool Matters yarn up and the stitch markers up, which is fantastic. They're all sitting there, if you can see them on the counter, on the stitch markers there, waiting to go on the shelf. Um, very much looking forward to putting that up. I think I might spend a little bit of time doing some winding of yarn maybe some spinning something very calming and meditative med med meditative i can never say that word <laughs> um something that feels productive but isn't gonna be a high energy activity for my body because i feel very exhausted um those of you who deal with anxiety or stress you will probably know that it's not just about what's going on up here, but it's also about what goes on in our bodies as well. And um, someone brought that up uh, today and we were having a chat and it was just like, you know what? I think I needed to hear that today. Um, so yeah, so I'm trying not to let it get to me too much. I do feel exhausted and I wish I could just turn off. Like usually after I do my ordering and bits and pieces, I'll just go and I will just try and turn my work brain off for like a whole day. Mondays are my rest days. I usually try and just rest, no work, no nothing related to yarn, except for like maybe working on a personal project, if I can help it. Um, but I just don't seem to be able to do that tonight. Maybe once I get everything done and I do a little bit of spinning or something, I'll feel calmer. But anyway, I'm going to do some work and I thought you could uh, hang out with me while I do that. Oh, before we go, I, sorry, I usually end by saying that if you're feeling like this, I hope that um, you can do something to calm your mind and your body and soothe yourself and just... Just take a deep breath um, and remember that these feelings feel catastrophic to us right now and they feel world ending and like it'll only ever be like this forever <laughs> and that is not true. Things change. You will have a good day again. You will have a good moment again. Your stomach will stop being annoying again and... Um, you'll be able to see things clearer again. <laughs> um, so I hope wherever you are that you are having a good day and that you are feeling as good as you can be. Um, my mom and dad always had this phrase where like if they're not feeling good or whatever you ask them how they're doing and they're like ah I'm good for the state I'm in. <laughs> and I, uh, I always quite like that because everyone's good everyone's best is relative to where they are in their life uh, and I think that's worth remembering so although I'm feeling stressed um and all this kind of stuff I'm okay I'm okay for where I'm at <laughs> and things will get better so come hang out with me while I do some boring paperwork <laughs> but every part of me can't help but see the places you should be the spaces in between our words. Now I'm drifting through a regular store. Hello everyone. It's what day is it today? Tuesday. Tuesday. And it is Carl's mom's birthday. Yeah. Woohoo! So we have just picked up this amazing gigantic bunch of flowers from the local Kimberley's florist, which no relation to me, um, <laughs> but they do amazing um, bouquets and we just got like the pick of the day. So anyway, we're gonna go drop them off. Depending on I was in you behind every door And I can't remember what my words were good for Now I don't get to say I love you anymore Oh, oh I'm swimming back to shore Just trying to keep
I don't get to say I love you any Storm swept in your name It covered me with rain Now nothing feels the same Now I don't get to say I love you Everything is bright and everything is loud to me today. I was struggling a little bit last night. I can't see what this looks like, so hopefully it's good. There's a cat here. Uh, random chronic fatigue. Symptom flares. It's actually been really interesting. Um, when people I know uh, get COVID, and they're struggling with the fatigue of it. And they text me like, how the fuck do you do this every day? And I'm like, it sucks. <laughs> uh, anyway, I just told my team that I'm not feeling super good. Um, so I'm really hoping that I can get down to the shop today because I miss it. Love you, Love you Carl. Um, also, this room is bright. I miss my blackout curtains. I'm lying on the bed on my back with the electric blanket on to give me some warmth. And a cold, wet face cloth over my eyes. And like a podcast on really quiet. So that it gives me something to focus on. And this is like the only way that I can feel relatively like, eh still shitty but like I don't want to scratch my eyeballs out shitty and um, every time I try and move to do something else like everything just gets worse so that's fun but at least I have a cute cat she's a cute cat okay I'm gonna go and do some more resting but bored of resting I also got ow don't lift that up that really hurt <laughs> that little bit of light. Um, I also got really close to like actually being up. I got up and I had some food and some pills and I brushed my teeth and I washed my face and I was like ready to like put some clothes on, swear out my hair and then like <gasps> symptoms. Anyway, I was just complaining now. Or I just I hope you guys are doing good wherever you are. And we meet up We tell each other stories About how we've been since we last talked Our coffee day Moves into the evening We wonder how it got so late We walk around And I keep asking how I don't know better by now Ooh, I can try but you can't shake me I think we're going crazy Keep saying that we're through but Baby, I'm not over you We're quick to go attack But when we split, I need you back And I tell myself we're through But baby, I'm not over you You're the one, it's gotta be And I gotta get you next to me You try, but you can't shake me I think we're going crazy Hey everyone, you may have noticed that I'm up in the barn Fiddling with things Um... I'm struggling a little bit, I gotta admit. Every time I come in here and try and make adjustments, I feel like I'm battling against the sound and the visual component of streaming. And I just, like, I just wish we had a budget <laughs> that could extend to a better setup. Um, Cause the problem I have is we have one camera for the players, but we're playing around a table. 
So that means that no matter what angle I put it at, someone's going to get like the side of their face or um, we're going to get interference from the DM cam. Um, and then we have obviously the cam for the DM, which is fine, but like finding a good place for that on the table that doesn't show up in the screen. Um, yeah, don't even get me started on how we're going to do combat because we've tried an overhead combat camera and we just get glare and everything is like super flat when you're looking at it and there's like no dimension to it. So it's hard to see what's going on. We've tried it from the side, which looks a lot better, but then that camera is also in the table camera shot. Um, we have one microphone in the middle, which is a really good microphone. It's an omnidirectional microphone. It picks everyone up, but the problem is the levels. If we're just talking, it's very quiet. And if we're all laughing, then it peaks way off the charts. So, I mean, I'm not a sound engineer. I didn't go, didn't study this at all. And I just, it's just hard. Um, and all the tutorials that I'm looking at online are for people sitting there with their microphone, like one-to-one. -one. Um, and that's not, that's not what we're doing. <sighs> anyway. That was a little rant about the stream. If you want to come watch the stream and all of its imperfect glory, please pop over to the um, HodgePodge Heroes, either YouTube or Twitch. Uh, you can watch us fumble about in real time, <laughs> which is always quite amusing. Um, and I've just been informed by my lovely partner, Carl, that the internet's down, um, which is kind of vital to everything we need to stream. This is why I'm always in a bad mood when we start streaming. Because I'm in here for like three hours battling with it before people even get here. <sighs> anyway. Okay. Hello. This camera is usually the one we use for the players, for the whole table. Then we have a phone camera that goes in that tripod that shoots the DM. And then we have this camera that comes down from the top that we can use as battle mappy stuff. I'm gonna change it around a little bit. I'm gonna move that camera over there to be the DM cam. And then I'm gonna have a phone cam facing these three seats and that cam facing that seat and this seat. And I'm hoping we'll get some better results. It means three cameras all the time, which is really annoying, but, and then we'd have to make special compensations for battle cam, but let's try it. Hello everyone, we have just streamed. I thought I would show you the new setup that I installed quickly before we streamed. So this tripod here was a temporary measure. It was facing uh which one was it facing it was facing these three chairs boom 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 and then carl if you could point to the tripod hanging in the middle of the space this one here was facing um basically me and then the person sitting next to me there and then we had the big camera the big fancy camera as the dm cam and all the cables actually managed to be out of the way which was really good and this camera here gave a little bit of a view of the table, which I was really happy with. And I set it all up in OBS and like, it looks really good. So the only thing I think I need to do this week is buy another, or buy one, like create a hanging tripod thing, <laughs> a little screw thing for the, um, the beam up there so that we, cause the tripod on the floor is fine but um our floor is quite bouncy and reactive um and so it creates like a tyrannosaurus rex kind of like uh jiggling <laughs> if anyone moves their feet <laughs> so um i would prefer a non-shaky camera um for half of the players so yeah i'm really happy with that um we recorded with the new audio settings and i realized just as we started recording that there is a volume control that's separate on the mixer on OBS. So I think I can just increase that and then we'll be good to go. Um, 
so I'm gonna review the the whole episode it was a really emotional episode I was like actually crying it was like the last little section was all about my character and finding out their previous life and it was just like super emotional so yeah you know a D, D session is good if you're if it was like so emotional you've like connected that viscerally with uh, fi fictional characters anyway i think carl's pretty pleased as well um and the only thing that i need to do in here is this section here is now on camera behind me so before next week i need to just make that set dress it a little bit make it look nice i could hang a bit of a curtain but i like having this area here as our like staging area for the the obs and everything yeah production area production area exactly i can keep an eye on the chat and keep an eye on the levels as we're playing <sighs> i'm exhausted like physically because of all the work we did today um and just emotionally because of that incredible session but i so some people are like why would you put yourself through that when you're so tired all the time anyway but the this is what gives me the inspiration to create stuff these moments this D D the connection, the storytelling, the improv, all of that is what fuels my creativity. And so, yeah, this is just really nice. Um, gonna go chill. We haven't eaten dinner. We have to eat dinner. Hey, Carl. Hey, I am mildly hungry. Yeah, I'm pretty hungry too. So anyway, um, yeah, I, hopefully I, I can figure out how to put like a little clip of today's session uh, in here because uh, I'm really proud of the setup, but I think it looks good finally and hopefully it sounds okay hello i am surrounded by little bits of splitty acrylic yarn that uh not even my beginning crochet students can work with um because it's so splitty and icky um so i am binding them into little squares the squares are the holding of the camera right now but i'm making little granny squares um with the granny squares um for our awning which is going to go here so we've got these curtains closed at the moment these curtains are closed because the sun comes in so bright and horrible and i thought like, I'm not a summer person. And originally I thought, oh, maybe this is just me being grumpy, you know? Um, but no, it actually fades. Anything that we put on this table, it fades it very quickly, like just sun damage. So we have decided to put up an awning. And I'm excited. Uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be all knitted and crocheted. Just whatever bits and pieces. It's going to be a real hodgepodge and we are going to put it up and dad actually started putting in some of the poles for it yesterday which is quite exciting so yeah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna be working on these little guys um oh and the inspiration for it was a um a a street in spain that the community all got together and created these big patchwork um shade coverings for their street which was awesome so i'm hoping that this will inspire people to uh want to contribute to the awning in the future um because i have a feeling that it's gonna last for a while but it's not gonna last forever so we'll be able to like swap it up i'm already planning like a giant pride flag <laughs> version um to put up at some point anyway i'm rambling i'm gonna do some crochet Close. like you're trying to impress me but i just think you're over 